How did people take you, Richard? Because I, I mean, I've seen photographs of you when you were younger, but you know, mid twenty guys, obviously very knowledgeable, very cocky. How, how did they take you? Who is this guy? They must have thought. Well, there was a lot of people that that I have to that that were taken aback by the fact that I was trying to do something that would work, and that I would blatantly go. You know, when I went in a mental hospital, typically I was brought by psychiatrists. Who, who had a patient who was hospitalized. The people at the hospital didn't want me to do things, but I'd go to the family, you know. You know I'd bring a drooling Jewish lawyer, if that's what it took, to try something other, because families were always telling me that the patients were getting worse. They go, I go to visit my brother. He's worse than he was a month ago. And I'm afraid if he stays there forever, he's never going to get out. And I remember going to the mental hospital, and they actually had chronic wards. Chronic means permanent, you know, long and enduring suffering. And, you know, chronic pain means it's not going to, it's not like, you know, cutting your finger with a piece of paper that is going to go over there. I don't call that a chronic paper cut. Uh, and, you know, and literally at one hospital, it was chiseled in stone outside the building, chronic ward. And when I looked at that, I went, this is wrong. It just was wrong. And especially then, mental hospitals were very ugly, hideous places. And, you know, uh, you know, and even though it was 1970, they were electrocuting people to try and get them to change their behavior. And there are people who will defend electric shock treatment to the end of time because they got more change by electrocuting people than anything else. But excuse me, it still seems extreme. Most of the patients in these mental hospitals were overly medicated. And they even called it the Thorazine shuffles. And later on, that when they put them on a better drug, halophene, they were still shuffling around. And uh, the more I looked at that, the more I wanted to know for sure that you could do something to make contact with people. If they were delusional and thought they were Jesus Christ, then I wanted to see them on Good Friday. And I would bring crucifixes and carpentry tools and stare them in the eye until they were really convinced that they wanted to tell me they were Melvin Schwartz. Mm -hmm. And, you know, those classic things that, you know, people write about me doing and that I have in some of my books where I did outrageous things, those were mostly to prove it to me that there was a better way. So and over the years, we've slowly built a technology, and it's a large technology. And I know in the group I'm doing here, this woman came up to me today on the stage, and she said, ah, I, I'm a psychologist, like that. Like the fact that I make fun of psychologists means it's bad. And, and I said, and I'm the person that's trying to provide this field of psychology, the field of education. In fact, I have things for the field of architecture. Uh, I have all kinds of learning programs. I've developed learning programs for the military, that anywhere people are in a position where they can get smarter at what they do, even baseball, I have really good baseball players and design baseball programs for people to learn to be better baseball players. Once I understood that there was a mental process that worked, you don't study depressives to find out about depression because unless you want to depress other people, they haven't got any information. You study happy people and find out what happy people are doing and teach the depressives to do it. You teach the people that don't know which things are fantasies to have a different way inside their mind of knowing what they fantasized versus what really happened, and they'll start to sort it out. And sometimes it's real basic. I, I had somebody hallucinating wild, floridly things, I mean, stuff that nobody else saw. And, you know, let's face it, there's a lot of ideas that people share in common, which I don't. You know, there are a lot of people that believe in that I don't. You know, there are people that tell me that there are conspiracies going on and there'll be 50 people in a room all agreeing that, you know, there are gigantic conspiracies going on, that the United States government could keep a secret well enough to keep the secret that they'd had contact with aliens. I'm afraid the people in the White House can't even keep secret what they're doing yesterday. Uh, you know, I just don't see this as, you know, something I agree with. But we don't lock those people up. We don't lock up people because they have a religious belief. Uh, not in America, not in England. We go, if you want to believe that, go ahead and believe it. And, but if you have one, one person believes things, like that, you know, there's an angel in their closet, and their parents go and say there's no angel in the closet, they'll end up thinking they're crazy. Me, I check the closet first. It's the first place I do. Because I had a little girl that they thought was uh, mentally having problems, and she kept saying she talked to an angel in the closet. And when I went over her house with her psychiatrist, I looked down to her, and I said, 
I do have a question about your angel in the closet. And she said, what? I said, which closet? And she goes, that one over there in the hallway. I said, okay, show me. And she went over and there was a little doll, a little angel doll, and he pulled a string and it talked. She had been in therapy already for eight months and nobody looked in the closet. And see, to me, when, when somebody tells me there's a, a, an imbalance in somebody's system and that the reason a depressive has a mental imbalance, I want blood tests. I want to see what's out of whack because, you know, I've had people that hallucinated because their potassium is too low. And whether it's, you know, that they need to eat more bananas or they need vitamins or, or they need to have black lines around their fantasies, I'm not picky. I just want ways that people can do things better.